So this past summer, I had the opportunity to go on sabbatical with my family. Every few years, everyone on our team gets an opportunity to pull away from ministry for about a month and just be refreshed and reconnect with those that they love. And so my family, we were planning on going to Florida and we've had, I think, four sabbaticals in our 15 years on staff here, but this one had an unusual amount of expectation on it. And then right after that, my son got COVID, which means we had to quarantine for a little while. And then Shireen came down with some sickness and it was pretty debilitating. And those first few days, things just weren't going in the direction that I expected them to go. Those expectations were starting to to drop. Many of you probably know this, that oftentimes temptation comes when we're at our lowest point. And at that moment, temptation really started to enter into my life. Actually, this woman that I had a relationship with in the past actually re-entered the scene, as crazy as that sounds. Her name is Zelda from Princess Zelda, the video game, okay? Some of you are like, oh my gosh, I'm about to have to leave this church too. Like, this is just... And so I'd just be on the switch, just just consumed and spending hours a day in this little video game because I was just trying to escape. And I realized about four or five days into this, like this is not moving in the right direction. Like this, I, this is not the refreshment that, that the elders are hoping for us to find or anything like that. So I need to make some changes. And, and so I decided one morning, I'm going to create a structure. I need some structure. That, that structure like brought me new life, even when I was taking a break from real life. Now just think about if I needed structure while I was taking a break, how much more do we all need structure considering the demands and the responsibilities and the calendars that most of us are running? And every now and then we get these little gifts from God, like these little moments of reflection where we can stop and say, like, am I actually becoming who he wants me to become? Am I actually moving in the direction he wants me to move? Sometimes those moments of reflection are a sickness that just forces us to slow down, or it's a breakup that causes us to look in the mirror and wonder who we are and where we're going. The gospel that Jesus came to bring is, yes, I have come for your forgiveness. I have come for your salvation. I have come, I've come for your eternal life, and I have come for you to have abundant life in the here and now. And so many who know and look to Jesus are not actually experiencing that. And that has been really the heart behind this entire Cultivate series, for us to find ways that we can become more like Jesus for the good of others, to actually put some stuff into practice so that we could actually live the life that Jesus came to offer, not only for our good, but for the good of those around us. One way to determine if you really are walking with the Spirit and if His his evidence is actually existing, his fruit is existing in your life, is to ask the people closest to you, how would you describe me? And if they don't use words like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and on and on, then you might know that the fruit of the Spirit isn't really all that evident in my life. But you can also know this, but it can be as you walk with the Spirit. These can actually be the descriptors that people use to describe us as followers of Jesus. When you said yes to Jesus, yes, you got forgiveness. And when you said yes to Jesus, yes, you got eternal life. But when you said yes to Jesus, you also got access to what it means to be a full, free, fully alive human being. And as followers of Jesus, I think sometimes we gotta get back to understanding the process the process. And many of us, we understand the power, especially in a setting like this, like we understand the power of God. And so many of us are like, man, I don't have love in my life. Like I'm not a very loving person. So we pull our shopping cart up to the altar and we're like, Jesus, give me love. Jesus, give me patience. Like I've lost my temper five times this week and I just need it. And so here I am with my shopping cart. Where's the patience that I can put in and purchase so I can actually become more like you? Like we understand the power of God, but many of us, we've lost sight of the process for that fruit to actually be lasting in our lives. This is what a rule of life is, or what we call a life trellis. A life trellis is just a structure that we put in place in our lives, like I did on sabbatical, that says, I'm not creating it, I'm not producing it, just like I don't create the tomatoes and produce the tomatoes, but I am gonna cultivate an environment that the Holy Spirit can use to bring His best fruit out in my life life. 